Hi there, Bren White again for Living Out the Truth. And we're focused on uh, the book of First John, the first letter of the Apostle John. Today, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful fall day, and so I thought maybe we'd go outside and uh, do this. Uh, uh, I hope that uh, you're enjoying uh, the beautiful fall weather as well. Um, let's just jump right into chapter 3 of 1 John and uh, see what all the apostle is trying to convey uh, to those first Christians and to us spiritually. Very uh, important spiritual things that John wants us to know. See how very much our Father loves us. For he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. Still keeping us focused forward, forward, stay focused forward uh, for Christ's return when he appears. That's what John's thinking about. That's what we should be thinking about. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is when he comes in the clouds, when he returns for us to gather us together for eternity, all those who have been baptized into Christ, uh, immersed, sharing in his uh, crucifixion, in his burial, and his resurrection. That's the whole point of all of that teaching. Uh, this is what it means to belong to Jesus Christ. And you and I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, as Peter taught, in Acts chapter 2. And uh, so that's why he is talking to us in this way. And we will actually be able to see Jesus as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation, I hope you have an eager expectation. Uh, we should be cu cultivating an eager expectation of Jesus' return. Will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. This sounds like, like what Peter says in terms of uh, quoting the Old Testament and you and I needing to be holy as he is holy. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law for all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins and there is no sin in him, all who have been baptized into Christ are covered with the righteousness of Christ. There is no sin in him. This is what the apostle teaches. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. Now, this is the way he started this letter. And I know it's challenging for a lot of people. Uh, but this is the way he presents the gospel truth. So you and I need to absorb it exactly as he is saying it. He's saying it for a reason. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Now, the wording and the translation has to do with the practice of sin, practicing sin, continuing uh, in a sinful uh, way, manner, a manner unworthy of the gospel. And sometimes Christians uh, let themselves off the hook immediately and say, oh, we're all sinners. Well, I'll keep reading, keep reading. Uh, the Apostle John is saying some things very, very clearly here, start to finish, about sin and how if you're in Jesus Christ, you are not to be practicing sin any longer. There is no sin in Christ. Righteousness.
Anyone who keeps on sinning, practicing sin, does not know him or understand who he is. Can't be any clearer. I want you to think about this. This is heavy. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous. Yes, when you do what's right in the sight of God, it shows that you are righteous. You're living a godly life, a life that is worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what is taught to throughout the entire New Testament by the apostles. Uh, you, you need to take it all in, receive it completely. Even as Christ is righteous, there's that purity of Christ, purity of heart. Jesus Christ started off teaching about uh, Matthew 5, 8. Paul talks about to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Huh. This is God. God's saying this. Who has been sinning since the beginning, but the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil, or the work of Satan. That's what Jesus Christ did. He came to destroy, definitively, the destroyer, Mr. Destructo himself. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. There it is, the terminology. Do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. John's saying exactly what the Apostle Paul said to the Colossians. Yes, yeah, that, and to the Ephesians, that Christ is our life. He is our life, the one who is life himself has the power over life and death. He is our life and he is righteous. He's righteous. He dominates our thinking. He dominates, he reigns in our hearts and our minds. If he's truly Lord of our lives. So they can't keep on sinning because they're the children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. You have to be doing what is right in the sight of God, following Jesus' example, doing what Jesus was doing every day that he was on earth, and then the love of God will be dominating who you are and you will be able to love those around you the way Jesus did this is the message you have heard from the beginning we should love one another we must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother and why did he kill him because Cain had been doing what was evil and his brother had been doing what was righteous the evil killing the righteous happens all the time all through history and evil people are violent <laughs> and they don't mind destroying that's the what's what he's saying here that's the truth that's the truth people who belong to satan are are all ready to destroy at every moment destroy relationships, destroy reputations, slander, gossip, do all kinds of, of destructive things. Uh, that's what it means to belong to Satan. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. That's what John says. Don't be surprised. If we love our brothers and sisters, who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. The people who really belong to Jesus Christ, deserving of his love, filled with his love, 
not a bunch of other nonsense, not a bunch of lies. The people who are filled with the love of God and the Spirit of God, they deserve uh, to share in this fellowship and this love that, Paul, that uh, John is talking about. It proves that we have passed from death to life, similar to what Paul was talking about in his letters. But a person who has no love is still dead. If you do not have love toward other people, especially your brothers and sisters in Christ, those who, who actually do belong to God, who are truly children of God, who are not practicing sin, who are not fully deceived, they actually are children of God, then you are still dead. You and I have to be loving those that God loves, that are doing the right thing in the sight of God. Even, even if we need to correct each other at different times, even when repentance is called for, uh, this loving is there. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart, similar to what Jesus said himself. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life with them or within them. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. Total sacrifice, that's what it is. Jesus Christ loved you so much that he gave himself completely for you. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters, sacrificing for each other, loving each other, caring about each other uh, all the time, ongoing, uh, this this uh, requires some energy, some communication. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Now, just let me say here that this is, uh, this again has to do with uh, the voluntary nature of love and of generosity. Uh, this is not a, a, a guilting thing, uh, nor an equity thing, uh, where, you know, this is to be expected that somebody owes you something. That's not the message of this passage at all, at all. This is to the Christian who needs to be loving and generous in every way in order to be like Jesus Christ. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other in words. Let us show the truth by our actions. We're living out the truth. You want to know the truth? If you love your brothers and sisters, you will demonstrate it. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's over years and years and years and years that you and I get the opportunity to demonstrate uh, faithful love to others um, and sometimes it's ruptured sometimes it's broken uh, but uh, you and I uh, are given the opportunity to consistently show the truth of our love to others uh, in the church our actions will show that we belong to the truth now, this is a little bit what James was talking about actions what faith brings actions uh, our actions will show that we belong to the truth. Uh, you do the right thing, and it shows that you belong to the righteous one. You do the right thing according to the word of God, and you are living by the truth. And John is uh, reinforcing that, is uh, confirming that here. So we will be confident when we stand before God, you not only have to stand up to the world, stand up for Christ in the world and be a, 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 a full-time ambassador for Christ in the world, a world that may hate you, but you also have to stand before God. The accountability thing that uh, most human beings are not paying any attention to right now. Every human being will be standing before God. It's said repeatedly throughout the Bible. 
you'll stand before God. If you're a human being made by God, you'll be standing before God at the end on Judgment Day. And he's saying that those of us who are living out the truth, we can stand before him with confidence. Confidence. Praise God. Praise God. And I need to live with that confidence. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. He knows everything. He weighs it properly, too. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty... We can come to God with bold confidence and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. Uh, he's not boasting. He's saying the truth and he's saying exactly what Jesus Christ taught. Uh, this, this is the way it works. If, if you are seeking to do, to do the will of God every single day, and you're praying your way through that day, and you are submitted to him actively for his purpose all day long, every day, of course you're not going to be sinning. You're not going to be practicing sin. And you're going to have boldness. You're going to have confidence. Of course. Of course. It's only when people are kind of playing games and uh, aren't all in that they kind of have uh, trouble with this. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. Now, this is exactly what Jesus said. This is exactly what the Apostle Paul said in his letters. Uh, the consistency, uh, the constancy of God's word uh, is amazing, truly amazing. So let's take this to heart, and um, we'll continue on next time. We have chapter 4 and chapter 5, and uh, we will go through um, and uh, on into uh, 2 John and 3 John. Uh, but I am so glad that you are with me in this, and I pray that this is helping you uh, to really get focused and to really keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and on his return, and, uh, and that you will be ready for his return. God bless you. You stay strong. Bye-bye.